Okay, we are moving on to step 11 out of 14, so we're almost done. So right now, if you run your game, you should be able to hear sound and ricochet this ball. And um, But you'll notice that our score and our lives aren't making any adjustments yet, so we need to hit escape from that. And now we need to set up some actions for our score and our lives situation. So for the score, we want to add points to the score when the ball destroys a brick. As you can imagine, we have to add a new action to the line where the collision between the brick and the ball is handled. So we'll want to go back to our event editor and find our collision between ball and brick. So that's the condition that we're going to make add another action to. And the action is we want to find the player one column and right click on that space with that condition and go to score and we want to select add to score and a new dialog box appears the expression editor this dialog box allows us to perform calculations in MMF2 for the moment just enter the number 100 while we um, in the white edit zone so we're gonna hit 100 in here and say OK a new condition is inserted. If you try your game, you'll see that the score now increases as the bricks are destroyed. Next, we're going to set an action to the lives. The lives object automatically starts with three lives, and that's just the number we want. So let's think a little. We want to subtract one life when the player misses the ball and it goes out of the bottom of the play field. This gives us the following event. When the ball leaves the area in the bottom, subtract one life from the player. So again, I'm reading your instructions here. And this is the condition we want to set up an action for. When the ball leaves the area in the bottom, subtract one life from the player. So we need to enter a new line of event. So let's go to new condition. Right click on the ball. And we want to go to now locate the test position of ball golden. So I'm guessing that's going to be under position, test position of ball golden. This opens up a new dialog box uh, for you to choose which side of the frame to check. Select leaves in the bottom only. So mouse over that, leaves in the bottom. So select that arrow and say OK. So we now have our new line. Um, we have ball and leaves the play area on the bottom. So that's our condition. And so now we need to say what we want to hap have happen when this condition takes place. So we want to go to our player one column. We will right click and go to number of lives, subtract number of lives. And let's see, we want to enter the number one. So we just want to lose one life every time the ball exits out the bottom. Okay, now we're going to add a losing noise when the ball loses, when the player loses one ball. So we're going to open the sound object actions menu and choose play sample. So let's go back to the sound column. We're going to samples, play sample, and now we want to again browse and we're looking for the down 01 file. And before we close this now we want to make sure we check mark this box that says uninterruptible. So this sound will play fully and will not be interrupted by any other sounds. So we want to make sure the uninterruptible um, box is checked, then say open. Okay, now let's get a quick test run of our game and see how things were going. Oh, okay, so I <laughs> just lost the ball and now you'll notice that I got 100 points over here and I might want to adjust my score placement so I can see the entire score. Uh, because I got a chocolate brick, I got 100 points, but then I lost the ball so you'll see that I also lost a life. And the next thing we're going to want to do is set this up so that um, the ball comes back <laughs> so to give me another chance. So go ahead and escape out of that. And since I noticed my score was a little off there, I don't want it to be um, cut off. I'm going to slide it to the right a little more so that my score will display fully. Okay, now we need to program an action to bring the ball back into the game once we've lost it. So locate your mouse on the same line than before. Oh, we need to go back to our event editor. So ball leaves the play area at the bottom and under the ball object we're going to right click 
and we're going to go to position, select position. This option automatically displays the frame for you to point to the new position of the object. Position the flashing cross in the middle of the frame under the bricks and click OK. So we need to move this back to where we want the ball to start um, once it enters back into the game. So wherever you move that box, that's where the ball is going to begin back in the game. Um, da -da -da -da. Positioning the flashing cross in the middle of the frame under the bricks, then click OK. So we've now entered a new action that repositions the ball um, automatically in the center of the screen when it disappears from the bottom. So now let's try our game again. And say I miss the ball. Oop. Okay, so there it, it came back, but now the issue is it goes down right away. So let's exit out of that, and that's going to be the next thing we fix. Okay, so when we demoed our game, we noticed that it's very difficult to grab the ball when it comes back in the play area because it goes straight towards the bottom at a high speed. So what we need to do is just after repositioning the ball in the play area is to change its direction to the top. This can be done by a simple action. Locate the check mark with the position action and right click on it. So right click back on this. Um, locate in the action menu, select the option direction and then choose select direction. This opens a dialog box similar to the one we have found when setting the movement property of the ball. Select only the directions that point upward. So let's clear what's on there and we only want to select the arrows that start going up. So any of these top arrows. We want to have all those selected so that our ball starts out going upward. And next we're going to add a little music. We're going to add a new event that says at the start of the frame play music impact.mid. So we want to click on new condition and we're going to right click on the storyboard controls. So that is this one here. So right click and select the option start of frame. Then right click under the speaker object and choose the option play music. So we have start of frame, we find our speaker object, right click and say play music. Next we're going to go back to browse and locate the music file under Choco Break. Say open and we now have the action of music beginning at the start of the frame. Okay moving on to step 12. One final thing to do to put some finishing touches on our game is to, de to detect when the number of lives equals zero and when it is to end the game. This can be done very simply. Click on New Condition and in the New Condition dialog, right click on Player 1 Object. So we have New Condition, right click on the Player 1 Object, and we're going to choose Compare to Player's Number of Lives. This operation, this opens the expression editor. Just click OK because we want it to compare to zero. So when it sees zero lives, then we're going to tell it what to do next. So now the action, right click under storyboard controls and choose the next frame option. So when number of lives, lives hit zero, we're going to go to the next frame. You can certainly understand that when the number of lives reaches zero, MMF2 will switch automatically to the next frame. Next frame, but there is no next frame. Well, we are going to create a new frame with the high score table. So now we need to create the new frame and in order to do that we need to display the storyboard editor which is this button up here. So click on the storyboard editor. It shows all the frames one after the other. For the moment we only have one so we're going to add a new frame. So click on the to button. You can immediately see a new frame has been added. We're going to drop some objects into the frame. Click on the to button for the frame editor, which we just did. First of all, we're going to oh, actually click on the to button again and that's what opens it up <laughs> for us a little to give us a better play area. Locate the object screen high score in the library. So go back down to your library and you'll see an image there called screen high scores. And We're going to drag that in and fit that right onto our play area here. Let's get it lined up just right. 
Now we need to add in our high score object. So I'm going to drag this down a little more so I can see more of my area. We are going to go to insert, new object, and we need to select, we should have game selected, and then we're going to choose high score and say OK. So uh, you can see my cursor that it's loaded into my cursor here. We're going to drop it in the middle of the frame and in the property toolbar you can now see all the properties of this um, high score object. Feel free to experiment. Do not forget to change the font of the object by clicking on text options. So you can kind of experiment um, over here. We'll, if you'll notice that text options is this um, window up here. So text options, it has our our font, it has whether it's bold, it has the color. So you can kind of experiment with um, how you want your text to look on your high score screen. Okay, so once you get your um, font chosen and your font size chosen, let's go back to uh, this settings option. So we can choose the number of scores we wanted to display, the length of names that we can have displayed. Um, we're actually going to leave that alone. Display the high score table for 10 seconds and then restart the game. So we want to, let's see, set the time limit. So you might guess we're going to use the timer object to do this. Now click on, let's go back to the events editor and you'll see that we're, um, all of our previous uh, events have are gone because they're actually tied to the other other frame. So we have a new frame, so now we have new um, events here that we're going to have to add in. So click on new condition, choose the option, let's see, we're going to use the timer object. So find the, the timer, right click, and we're going to choose is the timer equal to a certain value. And under this we want to drag this to 10 seconds and say OK. OK, so we said when our timer equals 10 seconds, now we need to tell it what to do when it happens, when it reaches 10 seconds. So in the actions menu, under the storyboard controls, right click and choose restart the application. So we want the game to start over after it's been on the high score screen for 10 seconds, we're going to start the game over. And we can test out our application again. So this time, we're not going to choose the run frame option because we don't want to just run this one frame. We want to run the entire application. So click on the run application option. And this shows you the game. And let's see, let me hurry up and kind of die here. Okay, so I lost, it takes me to the high score screen, allows me to put in my name and say OK. And then after about 10 seconds, hopefully this takes me back to start the game over. So let's wait a couple more seconds. Oh, and it worked. Yay, so we're almost done. Now we just got to add on a title screen and we will do that in the next video.